I have monthly regular Tamara Shoemaker, and right. she's going to be talking about at least updating what's happening with the Cyber Patriot program. So uh, let, let's again assume no one knows what the Cyber Patriot program is. I don't know how they could not know at this point. But hey, there's probably one or two. Yeah, given our massive worldwide reach, right? You know. Yeah, so, so yeah, give us the, the basics on what is the Cyber Patriot program. Oh, you're killing me. You've been doing this for seven years and nobody knows what's going on now. I know. I, it's hard for me to believe, but still, you know. So. Oh, no, 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 no. Glad to tell you about it. So here in Michigan, um, we've been building the Cyber Patriot program and it's a national program, though. And so I want you to know that it's for it's for kindergarten through 12th grade. It's a cybersecurity education program um, and it's been run by the AFA for uh, for the last uh, 14 years. Uh, very excited about, you know, being involved in this um, because for uh, from kindergarten to fifth grade, there are free video games online that people can just download and become uh, and, and those kids can play the games and they're becoming cyber security aware and protecting them, learning how to protect themselves. Then when they get into middle school and high school, there's an actual national competition and that competition runs from October until March. Um, uh, you can get into this program for uh, a team. It costs $205 for a team in a high school, $165 uh, per the year for a middle school team. And that gives them really a year round program, even though the competition only lasts from October until um, uh, February uh, or uh, March, because you can practice. They have practice rounds. They have tutorials. You get free Cisco Academy. You get Microsoft and Linux operating systems to play around with. And so it's really a year round program. Then most most generally in your communities, um, folks have cyber camps as well. So that's another uh, exciting thing to do during the summer for them. Um, I'm just very excited because it has some, a little bit of something for everything. And we even have a session or a program for our senior citizens, one of our most vulnerable communities. And that's called the uh, Cyber Generations Program. And they just came up with right now, they just have a new year this year, they have a new program called Tech Caregivers. And what it is, is to take all of that material and things that you would teach a senior citizen and tr train up on that awareness training and you be get a certificate and then basically what they hope that you do is go out into your community and talk to seniors about keeping themselves safe and so that's why I'm involved in this it's, it doesn't take very much money to get people involved to get a team on out there and then you know uh, coming from higher education and now in the auto industry there's such a shortage of, of people in this industry um, and, and it takes so long to sort of get them through that and, you know, follow that pathway from from being in school uh, to, you know, college and university and with the right experience. It just takes a long time. And so I'm really trying to make sure that there are more people in the pathway and seeding that with the getting getting kindergarten. If we've got to start in kindergarten, that's when we should. And, and we should very you know, logically, they start to go on the internet and they start to play around with the, uh, you know, with the tech. And so it's a really good time to give them that background. All right. Uh, so tell us a little bit about this year's competition. Um, I believe it's wrapping up, if I remember it, my timing it, right, right? It, it is. So the competition started on, on March 17th and it goes to the 21st. And when it's the competition, it's a live a live trial by fire. So, you know, during the whole year, it is virtual monthly competitions and everyone's going nationally head to head, but they don't really see each other, right? They're just playing the game, getting their, their, their points. And then it's just about points and how you, how you, you know, how you set in the bracket. But when it's, time for nationals it's face to face and there are 28 teams that are brought in from all of the divisions the top three from each division and then they go head to head and then you've got ibm and you've got red hat uh, folks uh, attacking them and it's um basically they've been given a, a business to defend from all of this stuff that's happening to them and um the top teams uh win for na nationals and so it's a very exciting time today would be a very exciting day i have lots of friends who have teams there and they're very excited and, you know, today's the day, right? Today's when they find out who, who wins and, uh, and, you know, brings home those trophies. And so it's a very exciting time. Um, it's also a time of transfer, uh, you know, when we transfer over. So the Nationals finishes up 
And then basically um, they, they put a call out for folks that want to host camps across the country. And then uh, uh, we, we start to plan the, the summer camps for the following season to sort of seed the, you know, uh, when you have a, a high school team, you want a middle school team. And when you have a middle school team, you want people who are coming in from, you know, uh, you know, uh, summer camps that are already ready and want to start playing. And so it's, a, it's just a continual kind of process. And that's sort of where we're at right now nationally. So it's a pretty exciting time. Um, I have been to the show. It's an amazing thing to see all of these people in action um, and all these kids getting scholarships and job opportunities and people are following their careers. You know, it's really, really when it becomes quite exciting. Certainly uh, when those winners are announced, be sure to share those with us or with me so I can get Absolutely. them into MI Tech News. And I'm sure Matt would be interested as well because he's the editor of Technology Century. Uh, so we'll both give it a lot of big ride because I know a lot of the engineers out there would probably be curious and cybersecurity people, heck, businesses in general. Who are these folks, you know? So uh, Absolutely. we'll give them a little bit of publicity. Speaking of summer camps, uh, I know we talked about that the last time you were on the show. Is that firming up now? Do you have firm plans no, summer? no i still really don't i still really am in sort of the, the planning process and and that has a lot to do with sort of um you know sort of over during the covid issue you know covid two years where we had to go virtual and you know things were a little strange um uh, as far as pulling them off and having it you know doing it in a different kind of manner um we've lost some of our volunteers and some of the oomph that we had right and some of the growth um we're starting to get that back but it's still we're still a little bit behind on that so we're looking for folks that are volunteering to help me teach them we're looking for venues that want to so schools across the you know whether it be a, a university college high school. Um, I've even taught down last year, we taught at Westland in uh, the elementary school um, for fourth and fifth graders. And so all of those places are open as venues and opportunities to, to do a summer camp, but we really, really need volunteers and we really need sponsorship. So it's funding. It's a funding issue. Um, and, you know, everyone was hit hard during COVID um, as, you know, as expected, you know, life and death situations that are far more important than summer camps, but uh, we definitely need some funding in order to keep, keep on growing the way that we've been growing. Hmm. All right. So um, what kind of volunteers are you looking for? I mean, are you looking for people who are IT security experts, or can this be just an interested parent or a, a community it really member? Could. And, and what are those roles that they might what have? A, what a great question, Matt, because it really can. I mean, that's one of the things that's kind of the beauty of this is this, because this has been um, put together for so long, it's very easy to plug and play. And so, you know, the slides have been put together, everything is all there. And you really just need to know uh, uh, your way around an operating system, right? You need to know how to log in, you need to know how to change a password, you know, those kind of little things. And really, we need more hands that are less um, uh, you know, expert to just make sure we have maintained sort of, you know, a, a nice large classroom, make sure that, you know, if Bobby's having a hard time logging on, someone can pop over there and, and do that while the instruction is going on. And so we really don't need that many people who truly are going to be instructors. And then even mm -hmm. when you are instructors, you don't have to be experts because it's been put together for you. And that's been the beauty of the AFA program and why Cyber Patriot is so easy for me to plug and play in the schools and, you know, and across the state of Michigan is because they do have so much already worked out for us. Well, I believe you also said last time that a lot of the folks that go through the program and then become cybersecurity professionals end up coming back in some way to support the program, right? They do. It, it, they, they truly do help. They are helping out, out in the community, right? So, I mean, Michigan's a long, uh, you know, we have a pretty big state. We have teams from Upper Peninsula all the way through to the Ohio line. So, yes, they do. They come back. Uh, and I've never had anybody who's volunteered saying that was a horrible thing. I don't want to do that again. It's always, thank you so much for letting me volunteer, you know, and I'm always so very grateful for the time that they share with these kids. But you will be amazed at what the kids are able to do. It's very an, a very eye-opening experience. I know it was for me. Um, you know, at, every time I go, I'm always shocked at what they can do. You know, it, they, they, they're getting much, you know, it's amazing. I'm getting as smart every day and they're getting smarter and smarter, younger and younger. I don't know how that works out that way, but it certainly does. My, just to interject here, my three-year-old grandson, at least when he turned three last October, I gave him a Kindle for kids and within 
when he came to visit in December with, of course, his mother and father came as well, but I was really wanted to see him. I didn't yeah. much care about them. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, that uh, he had mastered it in two months. I mean, he had the Kindle yeah. kid down cold and he could, he's just barely able to string sentences together. And here he is a computer was at three and a half now. You yep, know? They can swipe. They can, they can do all kinds of lovely things. I know my, my grandson did the same thing to my husband, shocked the heck out of him while he still learned how to shoulder surf him at about four. Right. So he just was sitting with him playing Angry Birds and he'd watch grandpa put in his password. And lo and behold, later in the day when he's playing with it, he's putting a password in and who knows what we was, what we were buying. Um, but these are things that they need to know and they need to know it right away. Right. Before it before they become mastermind criminals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So if uh, if people would like to get involved, um, how do they, they get in touch with you? So to be involved at the state level here in Michigan and to be able to help during camps and volunteer and just find out if your school is doing it or how you can become help your school get involved with it, you go to micyberpatriot.com. And then if you want to become an, a, a, a volunteer and you want to find out about the national program and see the schedule and all that kind of lovely stuff, you go to uscyberpatriot.org. Um, but if you do do that and you become a volunteer, please check with me again, too, because we have, you know, we have a lot of teams across the state and some folks get you know, uh, a, a ton of volunteers and others don't. And, and because we are able to do things virtually now, um, you know, uh, your your geographical location is not something that's going to hold you to where you can help. So if you can contact me, that'd be lovely. And that's at micyberpatriot.com. Well, two other quick questions. One, you're sitting in with a green screen behind you from Auto Isaac. So people are going, what's that? So that's my new my new position here at Auto ISAC is is to take care of all things education training and awareness for the Auto ISAC and I'm real excited because we just finished with our fundamentals course we're doing a training course for that was put together by the autos for the autos for cybersecurity for new employees and people who transferred for from from places that are not cyber that need some cyber education we finished that up on my birthday February 18th for over 150. Uh, uh, auto employees. And then we're going to be starting uh, April 11th, very excited for the hands-on portion. And we're going to be over at the American Center for Mobility and we'll be doing 25 at a time, can't handle a hundred at a time when it's hands-on. Um, and they'll be able to get in there, roll their sleeves up, work on cam bosses, work on, you know, chips, work on, you know, all the mechanic, the things behind the screen there when you're in your car or in your truck. Um, and learn how to do some of the things that need to happen in that. And so I'm pretty excited about kicking that off in April. And also, uh, you're always looking for folks to put some money into this, right? Be sponsors uh, as yes. in the sense of monetary sponsors. A absolutely. It takes money to, to do it, right? So for me to have, for, for instance, our state level competition, if I'm going to have, you know, uh, uh, the normal state level rollout and, and award everyone, I send out, we, we have trophies for the teams that cost money. You know, we used to do it face to face and I'd like to reestablish that. That's a little bit more expensive than our virtual award. And the same thing for the camps that cost money too. And so, yeah, we're always looking for financial support in order to hold this. What we're trying to do is make sure that it's uh, either free or really close to free for the students that are involved, right? So that, that there's no barriers to being involved in this. And in order to do that, I need corporate sponsorship in order to do that. And so we really are definitely in need of that. And again, that's micyberpatriot.com. You can easily donate and your donation, because it is a, a 5013C, your donation is uh, tax deductible. And there's just nice, easy uh, PayPal button that goes right there and you get your receipt immediately, you know, for your taxes. Okay. I was curious. I was curious too. Uh, who funds Auto ISAC? Is that something that's foundation funded or from the industry or or from the industry? Where does that come from? Okay. So each each one of the the OEMs and supply chain and folks that are involved in in uh, the Auto ISAC um, uh, pays a membership fee in order to be involved in the Auto ISAC. 